I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're going to dye some DK Weight 100% Superwash Merino yarn in some shoe boxes, play around with some colors that I have. I'm not going for rainbows today, but you never know where we're going to end up. <laughs> and we're just going to have a lot of fun. But before I jump in and start pre-soaking the yarn and getting everything ready to go, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Martha. Martha, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Today I am planning to dye up 400 grams of yarn. This is Knit Pick Swish DK. I already said it's 100% Superwash Merino wool, but if you want to learn more about any of the tools or equipment I'm using in my videos, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description, and I have blog posts where I talk about my favorite tools and equipment for dyeing yarn, which may not mention the shoebox. I'm trying to think it may not talk about the shoebox, but I enjoy uh, using shoe boxes to set things up. I find them to be an inexpensive and convenient vessel for dyeing yarn. Um, and if you'd like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Martha, uh, you can go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. But I'm going to pre-soak in just some plain tap water at room temperature. All of this yarn for at least 30 minutes maybe a little more. Swish DK is fairly absorbent, uh, so it doesn't need a long time. But the main thing that's important here today is that I haven't added any acid into the yarn yet. Because when we eventually combine the yarn with dyes, we don't want the, the colors to strike too quickly. Shoebox yarn dyeing doesn't have to happen in a shoebox, but as I said, these are inexpensive containers that fit the yarn well, and you can get really stunning results on your yarn. Really what we're doing is a type of space dyeing where we're gonna have our yarn in some water, apply dye to different areas, and then move things around to blend it. And the results I get from this technique are really, really fantastic. But one big feature of what we're doing today is what I like to refer to as cold process dyeing. Because after we move the yarn around and have acid in there, I'm gonna let the yarn sit in that dye bath for a couple of days, usually 24 to 48 hours, to allow that dye to bind to the yarn slowly. And really, this is something I do mostly out of convenience. Because I don't have as many dye pots and I have over eight shoe boxes, so I can set up a lot more of my colorways in the shoe boxes all at once, and then have a day where I steam set things later on. And so when I say that it's saving me time, it's allowing me to apply dye to yarn faster to do more of that in one day, because then on the day where I'm steam setting everything, usually I'm editing videos or doing something else during that time. And so it allows me to streamline the filming and dyeing process a lot better. We are in full field trip mode today. Here are my two plastic shoe boxes. And in each, I'm gonna put 200 grams of yarn and they have eight cups of water with no acid. And so I'm arranging it now so that way when we lift the skein, one end is here, one end is up here, versus having it more looped like this where our both ends are at the same side. So I hope that that makes sense. And I know that some parts are gonna be on the surface, some part will be beneath, but to the best of my ability, I'm scrunching it in the pan and then sort of fluffing it up to give exposure to as much of the fiber as possible. I'm still on the fence of what colors I wanted to use. Actually, I'm less on the fence because we're gonna bring over some 0.5% stock solutions that I've made over the last few weeks for some color mixing. And sometimes when I'm playing around with things like this, I will measure out our dyes. But that's not what I'm going to do today. This is some forest green and I'm trying to be a little bit even. I feel like I had maybe around a hundred milliliters of this color left 
And I think the max that I would have would have been uh, like one gram of dye. But you never know. You never know. Now that project that probably has not come out yet, I mixed forest green with deep magenta. And let's see, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna add it along our top. Now those two colors mix, and I'm gonna add a little bit at the bottom. These two colors mix beautifully, uh, which is probably gonna be a little bit of a surprise for you, but uh, as for all of these leftover containers here, <laughs> uh, don't worry. Uh, I will be using, rinsing these out and putting them in my muck container um, where I've been saving dye for all of 2025 so far. Okay, here is a little bit of some dark navy. And the way I'm adding similar amounts to each container is just by paying attention to the pour itself. I'm getting dye all over my hands. Do, do, do. Okay, and the last color, which is gonna go down with the deep magenta towards the bottom, is some Cabernet, which is very, very potent. A very potent color. I've, I wonder, I hope the green isn't gonna disappear altogether. That would be very, very sad. But now I have a bunch of leftovers here that I need to wash out. And we have our dyes here that I need to be patient and wait. And so I think I'm gonna wait for 30 minutes before we move anything. But since we're outside, I am gonna pop the covers on just so that way we don't get anything falling off of the tree to come and disturb it. But I am so excited to see what's gonna happen and I'll see you in 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes and I just realized I forgot to bring acid outside. I'm trying to overexpose things a little bit so maybe you can see what's going on on the side. I see a lot of the colors individually, which is promising. Now today there's no difference between these two containers, but I did pause, I think at one point during the pre-soak because it occurred to me, you know what I should do? I should set up one of these where I have, and I, I need to do it with measuring the colors, but in one of the containers not have yarn in there and the other one have yarn to start. Have I done that already though? I honestly don't remember. Now, things look very similar here. Uh, but mostly, this one has a little bit more white sticking up. This one has more of the Cabernet going down, but there are a lot of similarities. We're gonna go ahead and add two, three tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm gonna come now and lift the yarn. Oh my gosh, these colors are so pretty. I'm letting some of that extra color drain. Then I'm gonna add the yarn back in. Oh my goodness, and I'm ple so pleased to say that I'm still seeing some of those green tones. It is very, very pink, which isn't a huge surprise, but what is a surprise is just how much color struck to the yarn without me even adding acid. Because one, two, three, because, you know, I added the acid, and yes, some things can happen pretty quickly. Oh, the, this combination is just gorgeous on its own from what I'm seeing lifted. I feel like I need to do this sometime with two cameras. Uh, one camera sort of like up uh, where you are right now, and another camera so you can see the yarn as I lift it up. But I'm just surprised. I know that looks that water looks dark, but I can tell that most of the pigment is already in our yarn, which is always really, really fun. Oh, this is so pretty. It's hard to predict what the average color of something will be until you mix it. Uh, I mean, I did have a feeling it might lean pink because we had both the deep magenta and the Cabernet, but oh, this is even prettier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm so happy. Okay, I am now going to put these lids on and we're gonna wait a couple of days. We're gonna let this finish setting cold. Now, again, at this point, I could take things, bring it inside, set up a hot dye bath and 
heat everything right now. And with only two samples, that wouldn't be that hard, challenging, time-consuming to do. But there are times when maybe I'm gonna set up a lot more, and so it can be a lot more convenient to wait. Now with what we have in here, it wouldn't end with just two containers. I have two dye pots. I could combine everything in each of those pots, heat it up, probably would be done within an hour or so. But again, if I was doing a lot more than two samples, then that might not be something that I want to do because this allows me to set more things up and then have a processing day later. But you'll figure out through your own dyeing process what tips and tricks and things help you proceed with your own projects. It's been two days and we're having a good old nor'easter out there. Whew, it is raining. <laughs> oh man, this is so pretty. Ah, I'm curious how much dye is left. Oh, not much. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, you know what I want to do? I know we didn't have any huge difference between the two different sets that we have, except that I was more blindly pouring. I'm going to link the ones that were together together. This way we will be able to say how similar or different things are. Oh, they are so cold. <laughs> So cold. I mean, it's 50 degrees outside right now. All right, I'm gonna pop the yarn into my steamer basket. Hoo wee. Ooh. Oh, we did have green. I was gonna say, like, ooh, do I see some green in there? <laughs> there is green. All right, let's go put this in the steamer basket. And I know that I love to leave no dye behind. We are gonna leave this behind. I will wash these containers out. And now I'm in like a steamer basket setup. I don't remember the last time I showed this, but I've got water beneath it, a steamer insert for my dedicated dye pot that's never used for the preparation of food. And I'm gonna steam in here for 30 minutes with an asterisk. Uh, because it's so cold outside, normally I might do 45 minutes just to give it some more time. But I'm volunteering at school in 45 minutes. So I'm gonna steam set this for 30 minutes, turn off the stove, but leave the yarn in here so it'll get more steam and heat for a long period of time. Uh, that's not gonna hurt the yarn in any kind of way and works with my schedule. And so I like to share when I do things a little bit differently and why, because it's not that you need to steam it for 30 minutes turn off the heat and let it sit for an hour. It's that I wanted to do about 45 minutes. I don't have time for that. So this is how I'm getting around that. But see already in the like minute we've been talking, we're starting to see some steam up there. That's great. Um, so I will see you when I return and we remove the yarn from the steamer basket. I figured I'd show us at the peak steamy after the 30 minutes. I've now turned off the stove and I'm gonna leave the yarn here until I get home later. It's like four hours later. <laughs> it's still a little warm. I mean, it's like totally handleable with my hands. I'm gonna go ahead and wash it now, even though it hasn't cooled completely to room temperature, but we're warm. <laughs> so good to know how long the heat lasts. If this were roving or non super wash yarn, I would not go directly in. I'm loving the, I mean, I know we have green in here too. Oh, you can see that. But it's giving like pink and navy vibes, which I love. I'm adding a little bit of dish soap. I usually try to use clear dish soap just because I find that Dawn, it's pigmented for a soap. But I'm super optimistic. Yes! We don't have any color bleeding. Oh, I am so happy. Because <laughs> Cabernet can be a little finicky sometimes and can stick around a little longer than you may want. But now I just need to finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'm going to put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. We're not in focus. 
Check out those pretty colors. I'm so excited. I haven't removed the zip ties yet, but things are incredibly consistent. We do, it almost feels like we have some yellow notes in here, but that's from the middle. I think I had moved them, there we go. See if I move it in a different way, then you can see just these elements that are so similar between not just the skeins to each other, but between all four. Now, there's gonna be some randomness in how these work up because there's some areas of the yarn that have more color than others, and they're not gonna be identically repeating because you can see these strands have some green, these ones maybe don't in that area, but overall, for not measuring how much dye I was adding into each pan, I would definitely call all these the same colorway. But Martha, I'm gonna try to give you two that were dyed in the same box. <laughs> but speaking of Martha, Martha, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope you love the way the yarn came out and watching the whole process behind it. Uh, this is something that I think makes Chemnitz yarn super unique. I label all the yarn with the video title and approximate date that the video has come out, so that way you can find the video and watch me dye the yarn while you're working with it. And I love being able to do that. And a lot of this is possible from all of the support of all of you watching and my lab partners like Martha. If you want to learn how you can become a lab partner like Martha, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Martha, thank you again for being my lab partner. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am not the inventor of the shoebox technique. There are lots of dyers that do various types of space dyeing where you add the dye and move it around. This is not an uncommon technique. But I don't know how many other people use actual shoeboxes. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, there's other dyers that, a lot of other dyers that will cold process yarn and then steep that or microwave it after and that do their dyeing in plastic containers. And so you'll find that a lot of dyers will do similar things, maybe a slightly different way, but ultimately you will find, if you play around with color and yarn, the techniques that you love the most and then the resulting colorways that you love the most. And that is so much fun. Now, I would love to do like a shoebox set of colors that all work together, but I think that it would be a little tricky to pick colors and know where they might blend so you get like a good mix in steps. I think that overall this is a more organic type of colorway than one with planning, but you never know. We'll keep trying and see where we end up. Let's take one final look at these glorious undertones. And subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And thank you so much for watching.